Welcome to Mr. Sanchez and his math. Today we're going to be talking about perimeter. So everything what we need to know about perimeter is that it's a one-dimensional linear measure and it's whenever you're talking about the distance around the outer edge of a figure. So here are the formulas. We're not going to talk about them right now. We're going to be talking about them throughout the lesson. And of course, I'm going to give you this at the end of the lesson so you can take some pictures or take some notes about it. But I do want to talk about the action words. Whenever you talk about go around, enclose, fence, borders, edge, all of those words probably, I'm not saying that it's 100% correct, but probably will be that you're talking about perimeter. So now how are you going to represent the perimeter? We're going to be highlighting or circling the units that we're going to be working with. And also we're going to highlight the borders. Okay, so now let's show time. For every word problem, we have to do our annotations. We're gonna be highlighting parts, highlighting action words, highlighting the total, and we're gonna be also underlining the question. So let's read. Ms. Macias wants to create a border for her bulletin board. The bulletin board has a length of five and eight tenths of a feet, and its width is three feet. How much border does she need? So now, if I am talking about a bulletin board, I know that it's a rectangular bulletin board, right? So if I annotate, I have the length and the width. So I have my parts. This is my question that are, are asking me for the perimeter. So now let's create, a, let's create our representation because we don't have it, right? Here is our representation. I just created the bulletin board that I as, I'm assuming there is a rectangle because they just gave me the length and the width. And I have to repeat the length two times and the width two times. Now let's talk about how we're gonna represent it. The, Highlight portion around means that I'm looking for everything that is outside in the border. And the addition symbols means that I am putting together all the sides, right? Now, whenever we're gonna create the formula, we have two formulas to find the perimeter of a rectangle. We have the first one that is the easiest one that is length plus width plus length plus width. You're just adding all the sides. The other formula will be to put together the length and then you're gonna add the width together. Now, this is the way how this formula will look like if we put the values there, the actual values, and now we can just solve. So let's go for it. First, we're gonna add five and eight tenths of a feet plus three feet. That is gonna be eight plus zero, eight, five plus three, eight. Remember the decimal point. Now, the decimal point, yeah. Now let's add the next one that is five and eight tenths of a feet. That is my other length. 8 plus 8, 16, regroup the 1, decimal in there, 1 plus 8, 9, 9 plus 5, 14. And now I'm going to just add the last width. That is 3. 6 plus 0, 6, decimal point, 4 plus 3, 7, regroup the 1. You're not regrouping 1, I'm sorry, you're just adding 1 plus 0, that is equal to 17 and 6 tenths. That is my answer whenever I'm gonna add all the sides. Now let's suppose that you wanna work with the second method that is putting together first the length and the width. Five and eight times two. Two times eight is gonna be 16. Regroup the one. Five times two is gonna be 10 plus one is 11. I have one decimal among my factors. That means that my product will have one decimal. So whenever I put together the two lengths, it's gonna be equal to 11 and 6 10. Next one, I will do the two times three, that is gonna be three times two, that is gonna be equal to six. Now I'm just, what I do I have to do with those numbers, with 11 and six, that is the total of my length, and six, that is the total of my two width. I am just gonna add them together, and my answer will be exactly the same than the one before. 17 and six is my answer for this one. 17 and six feet, because I'm just putting together all the sides. Easy peasy, right? Very easy. Now, let's practice with a given representation. In the previous one, we didn't have a representation. Now, they are giving us a representation and we have to work on that. Mr. Martinez is walking around his square-shaped apartment complex. Hmm. Square-shaped. The picture below shows the measurement of one street. How long will it be to walk a complete lap around the apartment complex? So, I know that I want to walk a, a complete lap around it. And if one street is 40 yards, but I know that his apartment complex is like a square, that means that a square has what? Yes, all the sides are the same. So that means that if one street is 40, that means that the other streets 
are 40. In this case, they were walking around. It's what is telling me that I will have to find the perimeter. So now I am just labeling this representation. I'm putting the circles because I'm working with them. I'm putting the adding symbols because I know that I'm putting them all together. Now, whenever we talk about the formula, the perimeter of a square is four times S. So S in this case is one side. So that means that it's gonna be four times 40 yards. Let's solve it very quickly. Here is 40 times four. I'm gonna create a tic-tac-toe for the four because I always like to make these times tables in my head. Four times zero is equal to zero, and then four times four is equal to 16. My answer in this case is gonna be 160 yards. How long will it be to take a complete lap? It will be 160 yards. Great, now you know how to find the perimeter of a given representation or just getting the information from the word problem. Thank you very much, guys. This was Mr. Sanchez and his math. We were talking about perimeter today. And here are some notes for you. Bye-bye.